In this video, I want to look at the very basics of InDesign. Uh, basically, just show you the layout of the interface and how to open a new document and what settings to look for when you're doing so. At the very beginning here, I'll just point out the toolbar over on the left. This is familiar if you've used any Adobe product. And also, at the very top of said toolbar is this black arrow. It is at the very top at all times. Please remember where that is. Now, this is where you should always go back to default. This is your default tool. You'll use it more often than anything else. And a lot of problems that people have when they're working in the software is because they're using the wrong cursor tool and they're trying to click around and it creates issues so always go back to this one after just about any move also on the right you'll see several different tabs such as pages layers links strokes and color including swatches uh, these are all important just knowing that these functions are over here and that you can add more to them by going up to window and then using some of the check mark text I'm sorry, some of the check mark functions here, the ones with checks next to them, are visible. So having those up there is really useful and it allows you to customize your workspace. The first thing I'm going to do is actually open up a new document, File, New, and Document. There are several options here, but more often than not, the one that we, you will use is Document. Uh, these other ones are for pulling together multiple projects at the same time, sometimes designed by different people. They have lots of purposes, but really more often what we're going to use is document. This will open up a dialog box that allows you to customize the canvas that you're about to use. Mine is set to inches because I went in and altered that. More often what you'll see by default is that the measurements it shows in width and height are set in picas and points. Uh, there's six picas to an inch and twelve points to a pica. It's an old measurement form used in printing. It's been around for a very long time. So that's what it's referring to. That can be changed in the preferences if that's what you prefer. The only thing that's really important here at the moment is a couple of things that are used as guidelines. Now I'm going to toggle off and on this preview so you can see at the same time what I'm setting up. Uh, for one thing, in the columns area, right now I have it set to 1. I can set it to 2, 3, 4, whatever I need. The reason behind this is being able to set up basic guides that help me when putting together magazine pages, newsletters, doesn't really matter what, but InDesign is for print. So it's giving you a method early on that allows you to set that. I can alter, also alter the size of the gutter between those fairly easily. Uh, I'm actually going to set it to three. Three is a good number of columns for a page regardless. Now this doesn't mean that it, these lines show up on my final document. It also doesn't mean that I'm stuck using this particular layout. This is just a guideline to help me. It allows me also to set my margins, uh, which I'm actually going to bring in to a half inch. And that just gives me a good, good reasonable boundary so that I don't put text too close to the edge of the page. Down at the bottom here, I actually have a bleed and slug. I'm sorry, just a bleed from a project I was wa working on earlier. I'm going to set that to zero because I don't actually need a bleed for this type of situation. I can set this to any size I want, but 8.5, 11 is what I want now. So that's how you open a new document, and what you'll see when you open the pages layer is now I have one visible page. I can add new pages based on this one, and if I zoom out using Command minus, you can see these added in. You notice they're set up facing pages. This is one of the check boxes when you do open up an initial document. More often than not, facing pages is what you want, but there may be a situation in which you don't. Also underneath that are the layers option. And this works the same way that anything, any Adobe product does essentially. It's most similar to Adobe Illustrator if you've ever used that program. Essentially, I can build elements. I'm not going to spend much time looking at the particular tools here because we'll look at that later. I can build out these elements on one layer. If I drop it down, you can see the circle located there. I can also add a new layer. Let me grab a different shape here. And I can drag that one over, and you'll notice the outline is red. Both of these are just black strokes around the edges, but the outline it shows, which is just part of the guides that help you identify objects in InDesign, it will not actually print at the end, uh, are giving me color-coded options that correspond with the layers. You can see that layer 2 is red. 
So these are ways that you can identify what your elements are just by seeing the outline around them. I'm going to change the color to these so they're visible. And then if I go over here and click down at the very bottom, it gives me different view modes. I'm going to set mine to preview. For some reason, it's hanging off the screen. But as you can see, the red stroke and the blue stroke disappear from around the edges. This is what my design would actually look like if I was publishing it. Uh, nothing particularly interesting so far. I'm going to take this back to normal setting. That's why I mentioned that this outline that shows that corresponds to the layer is simply something that's there to help you. It doesn't actually print. A couple of other things to look at with layers is my ability to use this eyeball icon to toggle them off and on. Now it's still there. Obviously I'm not really deleting it. I'm just making it invisible so that in some situations I can see below it if I need to or be able to get to a layer that is buried underneath something else. Another thing to mention in this same area is this little box next to the eyeball icon that if you hover over says toggle toggles layer lock so if I click in there you'll notice a little padlock icon appear and then I cannot click what was on that layer which is the yellow circle in this case I can still click this one but if I lock that layer that one too becomes uneditable so this is the basics of the interface, opening a new document and using layers. You want to split everything up on layers and keep it really simple so that you can navigate easily. And again, I can drop these down to see each specific thing that's on my layers. Even if I have a hundred items on one layer, it'll show all of them individually and I can go through and select them based on their description. I can also double click on a layer to rename it. and it will appear that way in my layers palette. I highly recommend doing this. It makes your life a lot easier.